Well, hey gang, I have not yet worked out how to do split screen on this uh, phone of mine, so I thought since I was bailed on by my uh, Pacific War gaming buddy today, I told him I'd be back by 2.33 o'clock ready to play, and he was too scared to play me, so uh, here I am at home. So I figured what I would do is, uh, now that uh, Pacific Wars has arrived, we'd have a quick look at it. There uh, is a game in here, uh, The Retreat of the Nez Neperse, perhaps? June, October, 1877, I will fight forever more. What a lot, I will fight no more forever. Doesn't that sound fascinating? Okay. So, let's have a look at Inside the Magazine. I have not had a chance to look at this at all. So you're just gonna have to deal with me if I uh, screw up what's going on in here. What have we got? Command and Colors Napoleonics. Command and Colors Tricorn. The Battle of Lepanto by Decision Games. Blitz, A World in Conflict. These Brave Fellows. Till Darkness Goes are the reviews. And then there's a feature game, which is what I told you before. Steven Newberg did that. So I think Steven's a pretty decent dude. Um, then he writes an article about the battle. Then there's more on None But Heroes, Operation Scorpion, Western Desert Force, the Warstorm series, and Napoleon Waterloo, the campaign 1815, fourth edition, which is just a garbage game. But anyway, uh, and Shield Wall from White Dog. Okay, let's see what we got here. I'm going to be interested in reading a lot of these. Now, here's one thing that I did notice when I opened this game, this magazine up. First of all, no ba no protective bag, so it's in a it's in an envelope, manila envelope. Uh, and this has sat in the weather because it's all kind of warped uh, and the paper from this uh, was damp as well, which is a real disappointment. So I really wish that the extra four cents it takes to put this in a bag would be done. That would be very helpful in a plastic bag that's sealed. So this is a review who by don't know Sam Shiki, uh, but looks fairly comprehensive. I quite like this system. It's a fun light game to get in there and play. You're not necessarily going to get, uh, you know, the full depth and flavor of, uh, you know, battalion scale or uh, brigade scale tactical game, whether it be Zucker or one of the new ones, Fallen Eagles, or whatever the case may be. But you're going to have some fun, and uh, you get a feel for the game, for the era and the period. You're not going to, you know, dive into the the deep deepness of it, and it is card driven, so it's a, it's pretty cool. Now. You know, I'll be curious about how this works out, the Tricorn series, because American Revolution, uh, we don't know how different that's going to be. Uh, this looks just like an ad, actually. Yeah, it's pretty much an ad. Uh, what are we doing here? And it looks like it's, uh, is it blocks or, can, or uh, yeah, it's blocks. Okay, so it'll be interesting to see the rules they apply to this because you've got uh, asymmetrical combat uh, going on there were some set piece battles that they'll be covering Bucky Hill and Long Island and uh, Bemis Heights and uh, Monmouth and Camden but uh, you know many of the many much of the conflict was uh, asymmetrical so I wonder if that's going to be covered in this as well so that'll be interesting okay the Battle of Lepanto uh, Doug Murphy does a review on this from Decision Games looks like a naval game is that a naval game it is an over game. Well, what do you know? Well, we can move right along because I'm not interested in that. And if you are, you can have a look at it yourself by buying the magazine. Blitz, A World in Conflict. I am hearing uh, good things and bad things about this game. And I think it just, I think it might be the medium to lighter level complexity, kind of like uh from what I've read of the rules, and I had it set up, but had to move it, had to pack it up for a variety of reasons. It feels to me like Axis and Allies with, a, with some crunch and, uh, and some depth. It's certainly not Unconditional Surrender. It's certainly not Whiff. Uh, it's certainly not, you know, Total Oak Krieg or whatever. It's none of those games, but it is a busy board. <laughs> uh, but it is a an interesting mag an interesting uh, game, I think. But I haven't had a chance to play it yet, so I don't know how it plays out and whether it goes off the rails immediately. It does include all the countries all around the world, so who knows what could happen there. So that'll be worth having a read of to get this guy's opinion. 
John D. Burt does these brave fellows against the odds. You know, it's interesting to see against the odds magazine game being reviewed in the Paper Wars uh, magazine. That's pretty cool. Short review looks like oh, clock that maybe 500 to 800 words. Looks all right. Got some nice pictures. Uh, Till Darkness Goes, I do not even know this game. It's a high-flying dice game. And man, I just have a real tough time with uh, their games and game systems. While Paul puts out a lot of fascinating topics, I just don't know. I just don't know. Yeah, I just don't know. <laughs> so that's another one that I need to read and have a look at because I would be interested in that uh, Vietnam era title. All right, here's the here's the uh, here's this particular game with the rules. Be kind of nice. I'd love to see the rules sep you know, uh, separated out and printed separately. I know that costs more, but here's the counters. They're magazine quality, kind of normal, not too thick, not too thin. They're not flimsy by any means, but you wouldn't want to. Uh, you yeah, they're yeah, they're about the same. They're about the same as any typical magazine game excluding GMT and uh, who else does thick counters? I think Battles Magazine does thick counters. These are on the thinner side, but they're larger and they're uh, you know pretty clear and concise and look pretty pretty all right actually. Got the little uh, Indian chiefs up here. Here's your big map. Is it, uh, there's information counters. This is a two map game. Well, holy cow. Well, maybe it's uh, one map and two battles. Who knows? Because I, I have not read anything about this. I, yeah, this looks like a strategic map of some sort. And this looks like, uh, yes, a tactical map. In fact, multiple tactical maps. Well, now I'm really curious. Isn't that interesting? So you've got four tactical maps here and then the strategic map that you can maneuver on by the looks of it. So that's gonna bear some reading, isn't it? Fascinating idea, I love games that do that. I was just reading some articles about uh, City Fight and Firefight and how the, the, uh, the effort to sync those was quite challenging. There's Steve's article on the campaign, None But Heroes, that's a Older game from MMP, I shouldn't say old, it's when to come out. I don't know, it's, it's certainly maybe in the 2000s, so I shouldn't say it's old. Um, it, I, don't, I, I don't even know which system this uses, whether it uses the last chance for victory system or whether it uses, a, uh, uses the earlier regimental uh, system here, see. The line of battle system, yeah, line of battle game system built upon the previous work in the game is... Okay, so this must be one of the first ones for... Last Chance of Victory was the Gettysburg module. And the line of battle system is... Uh, I think was perhaps even released with this. This is how much I know. You listen to me ramble. Okay, eight minutes. Just try and crank this bubby along. Look at all those stacks. Whoa. Okay, that's another long article that will be interesting to read. I've... I think I've come to a conclusion that tactical civil war battles is not where I need to be. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of uh, moving more towards the great campaigns of the American Civil War versus anything else. Operation Scorpion. Okay, player strategy article. Very nice. Wow. An avalanche press review. This is, is this a Panzer Grenadier system? Talk about a blast from the past. Yeah. No, it's not. No, it's just... It's just a, it's a, some sort of campaign game. Well, fascinating. There you go. Not a lot of interest in that. Not a lot of interest in this. Uh, this command system in this game is really, really awkward. Uh, I, I don't like it. I sat down with a buddy and reviewed reviewed it with him, and he he had played it, and we talked through it, and we had a look at the counters and talked talked about it. And the same will go for this thing. Unfortunately, I was kind of excited about this, and yeah, whatever. I'll be I'll be interested to read this just to see what they have to say about this game, and 
I, I found it uh, very frustrating and disappointing. Shield Wall. There have been a number of Battle of Hastings games published in the last couple of years. Uh, Tiny Battle Publishing has done one, Revolution Games has done one, and now uh, White Dog has published one. It's uh, interesting to see how people approach the battle. This looks like a fairly detailed map compared to some of the other games I've seen. Interesting. Okay, so there you have it. There's uh, Compass, uh, Compass Games. Paper Wars number 82, 2016 Spring Edition. Have a look at it. It's $46.95 with the game, I believe. Uh, that is what it is. And uh, we'll write something about the articles in it if I find something of soup that's super noteworthy. The game looks a very interesting just at first glance and, and not too detailed or too complicated for that matter either. All right, we'll, uh, we'll kind of talk to you guys soon. Ciao.